Hey guys, my name's James. And I'm Ashley. Last year we sold our house and we're traveling across the country with our kids. Hi, my name's Goose. And this is Maverick. <laughs> Come join us. As awesome as boondocking is, you guys, I mean, look at this view, that is incredible. There are some downsides that come with boondocking, and today is one of those days that we're gonna have to deal with all of that stuff. You can't see me, Daddy. You can't see me. Say what? You can't see me. Hello. You can't see me. <laughs> so first off, you can tell Goose is hidden behind the laundry. That's con number one of boondocking is at RV parks, they almost always have uh, laundry facilities there so you can very easily go do some laundry and then go back to your RV and relax. Con number two, when you're staying at places for extended periods of time, you tend to run out of fresh water. So that's where these big six, seven gallon jugs come into play. We're gonna go into town and fill up with some water. Con number three. You use a lot more propane when you're out boondocking versus when you are at a RV park. Because at RV parks, you can do electric fridge, you can do electric heat, everything is electric. Out here, all of our heat and fridge run off of propane, as well as our hot water tank. So we go through gas a lot quicker. Con number three, because of our setup, we don't have a ton of solar. We only have two solar panels. We do have to use our generator occasionally to get the batteries boosted back up, as well as our dirt bikes also use gas. So we have to fill up with gas. And con number four, and these are all very little cons, by the way. They don't inconvenience you very often until they all add up. But the next one is, Garbage. This is actually one I did not even think about when we first started talking about boondocking is I just took for granted that all the RV parks had garbage and you could easily toss your garbage out there anytime you wanted. It's actually even better than living at a house because at a house you have to worry about garbage day, but not here. So we have our garbage in the back of the truck. So we're doing garbage, gas, propane, water, and laundry all today. It is a very big errand day. Plus, we have to go to the post office. But luckily, I do have my helper here. Are you ready to help me out doing uh -huh. some laundry and whatnot? Uh-huh. Okay, all good. Right. So let's head into town and get this stuff done. All right, first stop is the laundromat because it makes the most sense to me to get the laundry going, drop it off, and then go do the rest of the errands. So that's where we're at now. You ready to do some laundry, Goose? Yeah? All right, let's do it. Oh, are you gonna pull that out by yourself? Can you get it? You need some help. Help. How about I help you? All right, Goose, we have the laundry done. Now we have 22 minutes until the uh, wash cycle is done. So we're gonna go and fill up our water jugs and our propane and get gas in the truck. Sound good? Yes? Mm-hmm. Is that all that we have to do? That's hopefully we can get all that done in 22 minutes. I don't know if we can, so we're gonna rush. Ready? Mm -hmm. Set, go! Okay, we made it to the Maverick gas station here in Moab. If you ever come to Moab, Maverick will be like your best friend because free dump, free potable water, diesel, as well as I'm hoping to fill up our propane tank here. But actually looking around, I don't see any propane, so maybe they don't have that. But because I'm patronizing here and filling up on gas and filling up on all that stuff, I don't feel bad dumping the trash bags here. Whether that's 100% legal or not, I don't know, but I've read a bunch of blogs and that's what most people seem to do. Either rest stops or places that they're patronizing and buying things, they feel like it's okay to dump a bag of trash. Now, I wouldn't come and bring three giant bags or four giant bags of trash here if you're gonna be spending $5 on a soda or something at a fast food restaurant. But if you're spending $100 on diesel and propane, etc., I think dropping off a bag or two of trash isn't a big deal. At least that's what we're doing. You okay, Becky? there I'm comfy <laughs> you're hilarious kid they didn't end up having any propane here but what just happened let's go get some laundry 
<laughs> our laundry alarm went off. So our laundry is done. I didn't, I never really like to let laundry sit at a laundromat unattended. While it's washing, they are locked and no one can tamper with it. And I seriously doubt anybody would. <laughs> Wid, and I seriously doubt anybody would, but better safe than sorry. So we're gonna quickly head back to the laundry mat, pick that up. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna use the dryers today, if we're gonna hang it up back at home. Uh, usually we do use the dryers at the laundry mats, but if you wanna save some money, you can just hang it up outside. And since it's a beautiful day, maybe we'll do that. But then we gotta go to another gas station and fill up our propane tank. Let's busy day. Laundry. Okay, this is crazy. If you're ever in Moab, which is like a huge RV destination, there is only one place in town, maybe one just outside of town they told me about, that actually fills up tanks. All the rest of them just sell those pre-filled propane tanks. So we're at the uh, RV farm supply store, and that's where we got the tanks filled up. And woo! four dollars a gallon it's that's pricey but we kind of need some heat and we kind of need our fridge to work so we filled it up we've got our water got our gas propane diesel trash is emptied now we just got to go pick up the laundry and we're good to go right yeah all right and she's hooking up the bungee cord can you get it all the way there get it Nice job, high five. You do the purple. Okay guys, now that we have all of our chores done, all the bummer work is out of the way, I'm actually really excited about what we're doing tonight. First off, before we talk about that, this view is incredible. Look at that, you got the mountains back here, the snow-covered mountains, and then over here you got these epic cliff sides. So cool. This campsite is probably one of my favorite BLM lands that we've been to. Granted, we haven't been to a ton of them because we haven't been doing a ton of boondocking, but still. Anyways, I digress, I get sidetracked. I'm excited about tonight. We are going to this place called Moab Giants, which is where they have life-size dinosaurs out in this uh, prehistoric pathway. But on top of that, they're doing like a Halloween theme. So it's like Jurassic Fright Nights at this Moab Giants place with these dinosaurs. I don't know exactly what to expect, but we're bringing our costumes so we can all get dressed up and just kind of celebrate Halloween in this crazy, new, weird way. this place is gonna be pretty cool it's not just I don't know I was I don't I was expecting it to be a little bit chintzier but it's actually pretty cool looking and normally for the full access pass for the 5d movie theater and the outdoor trail it's over $20 a person but sure but it was only $10 a person are you excited all right should we go to the trail and look at dinosaurs play in the playground what do you want to do trail dinosaurs dinosaur trail here we come <laughs> Makes them look kind of stupid. Seriously, with that backdrop, this is so cool looking. Is yeah. this its footprint? Yeah. So if we were at like the Oregon Zoo or something like that, I don't feel like this would be as cool as it is. But with these cliffs in the background, it actually is pretty cool, pretty legit feeling. My, it doesn't have a thumb. Pinky, this. Well, those are little guys. Look, that's it's an it. herbivore. Oh, it just it, eats veggies. What is herbivore? It's It. And, What's a meat eater called? Do you remember? Herbivore? Called Carnivore. Carnivore, very good. And I my head bigger than it. And what are we called? Because we eat both. Do you remember? Carnivores. Omnivore. Omnivore, very close. Good job. My hand is bigger than it. Alright, let's keep going. Okay, next one! There it is! Another dinosaur! She's what like do you see, Mav? All of them. Is that a dinosaur? Oh, that's a creepy one, that one. Magic. That looks like a meat eater right there. Watch out, it's gonna get you. Hi. <laughs> what do you think, man? No. That's pretty crazy. No, you wanna go back to the safety of your stroller? Can you give it a kiss? Look, teeth. Mwah. 
picking its teeth. Pick its teeth. I think I've learned enough from Dinosaur Train that those are in the theropod group, I believe. Dinosaur experts, let me know. Are those theropods? I don't know how to say these names. Right, the names are confusing. They need to have it spelled out phonetically. Uh, Dinosaurs for dummies, where is that? Come on. Well, we were doing dinosaur lessons for science um, for her homeschooling, and she was very excited. And I loved it because I sounded so smart because they had it spelled out phonetically. And she goes, how do you know their names? I'm like, well, I'm, mommy's amazing. Mommy, daddy, you know everything. Don't ask any questions. So they have these crazy names, but they don't tell you how to spell it. Perobrontopodus. Hey, Gus, are you having fun? Is this pretty cool? She's having so Look much fun. Right? Oh, that yeah. looks like a teenager to me. Spiky. Now look at the size of these. And what are the spikes for? Do you remember what you said? Armor. Armor. And what is that called? Their de defense. Defense. That's right. You want to pet Their it? Their eyes are oh, so happy. creepy. Can I go pet the mommy, mom? Oh, she's so happy. Oh, you want to pet this one? Can I pet the mommy? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, son. Over there? They are way more into this than I was thinking they were going to be. Super cool. But look at that. That's just awesome. Like, I'm nerding out. This is amazing. <laughs> Giving loves. Definitely a cool side of the road attraction. Okay. And this is just the outside portion. There's a whole inside a portion I'm excited to show you guys about. Oh. She loves dinosaurs. Do this or Mav? Mav. Well, both at this point, but Mav loves them. Are those the stegosauruses? Oh. It looks like a stegosaurus to me. And it's right here. Stegopodus. Oh, have I been saying it wrong or? It's apparently a stegopodus. Means stegosaur footprint. But my dinosaur Watch education out. does come from Jurassic Park, so it, it might be no, a little wrong. No, no, no. It might mean stegosaur footprint. So what? that might be the name of this. Oh, the tracks are yeah. stegopodus. Well, where's the name of the dinosaur? If there are any dinosaur experts watching this, I completely apologize for our lack of pronunciation or miseducation of anybody watching this. Uh, I do not claim to be educational. This is purely for entertainment purposes. Jurassic Park could happen. <laughs> have we ever told you the story about Ashley's college professor? Ankylosaurus. Those guys have incredible armor. That's so crazy. It's Cruiser. Let's go, let's go. Did you see the big club they have on the back of their tail, kiddo, for when they're fighting? Oh, daddy, daddy. oh. I've already lost her. She's moved on to the next dinosaur. Yay. Time tunnel approaching. Time tunnel approaching. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> she can tell us. Whoa! All right, we're traveling from the Jurassic to the early Cretaceous period. You ready for the time tunnel? Mommy, look! It's that meat eater. See, it's the Are you sure? and the eat that. Awesome. This footprint was found in Arches National Park. So cool. Look at the size of that sucker. Can you believe that dinosaur lived just like a mile from here? Look, there's another one. What? I see its tail. That that might be a little terrifying. Look at that. Its claws the size of my hand. What is that dinosaur called? Brontopodus. No, that's a. I thought it was a sauropod. I thought that was what it is. Classification. It's Rudolph. So, it's like a mixture of a brontosaurus and an ankylosaurus. I've never seen anything like this before. Like the theme I believe is like all the dinosaurs that are in this loop are found somewhere in Moab. So like these ones were found near the Moab airport. That's crazy. But apparently they're gonna be eaten, so. <laughs> okay, I have something that is gonna blow your guys' mind. So oh we my found, gosh. We, exactly, that's what I was just gonna say, it's gonna blow their mind. We found the Velociraptor. Uh, the technical name is Velociraptor Mongolian, blah, 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 blah. But you think Jurassic Park, you think they're about seven feet tall, probably weigh about 600, 700 pounds. The Velociraptor is length, head to tip to toe, 68 feet. A total weight of 66 pounds. That's it. That's the little Velociraptor right there. That's the bad guy in Jurassic Park. That's the Velociraptor. That's hilarious. <laughs> Albuquerque? 
museum? What do you mean? How it had that thing that you pushed the button and it made the noise. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, do you remember and, that? And That's what you were talking us. about. Oh, they make me. Did she tell you what these were earlier or something? Or? No, she goes, Mom, look, it's the ones that make that noise. And I'm like, oh, is that the noise you're gonna make? She, they make, and she goes, yeah, remember? Through their, the top of their head. <laughs> That's right, they do. That's amazing, good. There they are. Me. Dinosaur. What I really want to do is like put Maverick like right there. Looks like Is it like sniffing her? That would be a good picture actually. No, is that enough? <laughs> I've had enough. We're out of here. <laughs> Go! Before I get ya! So this screen actually isn't blurry. It's a 3D screen, so that's why it looks blurry. And this is a really cool. This is a aquarium that features prehistoric creatures like dinosaurs and whales and whatnot. And then at the very end, they have a final exhibit that is more scary, and they've created a genetically modified shark that attacks the screen. Uh, they do let the little kids go out before this, and they warn you about it. But it's a super fun attraction. It almost reminds me of like a Universal Studios ride with the 3D glasses, they spray water on you and whatnot, and it's all included as part of your entrance fee. So not only can you walk around, but then you can come to this 5D theater. How'd you get up there? Hi, I climbed. That's crazy. Did you notice this? What? Under there. Did you notice this under here? That's pretty cool. So not only are there dinosaurs here and a cool 3D or 5D movie experience, but then they also have like legit playgrounds. Definitely, if you have kids and you're in the Moab area, the Moab Giants is a must do. This is pretty dang cool. We just finished dinner here at the little cafe and now the real fun begins. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at this thing. Do you see that kiddo? What is it? It's just a guy. Ah! Look at this, we got Wonder Woman going on. Elastigirl, little uh, hot or not Hufflepuff. Oh my goodness, mom, I'm so sorry. Sorry, Harry Potter fans, but I'm dressed up as a Slytherin. I don't know why we chose. Why did I choose Slytherin? Mommy kind of chose guy. it for me. Oh, I had to be a bad guy. But this is so cool. We're going back through. We already did it all once during the day, but now we're in costumes and we're going back through oh my at gosh, night. <laughs> what do you think of this? All right, Goose, how was Moab Giants? I love it. <laughs> Did you, which, what was your favorite dinosaur? Triceratops, mm, long neck, and whatever that thing So is. the brontosaurus. As I was gonna say, I thought she said brontosaurus was her favorite. So Ash, I told them uh, what my cons were for boondocking, but what are you, do you have any cons that would go with it? So there's definite differences. I think for me personally, I traded like one worry out for another worry. Um, I traded out the worry of having power for the worry of running out of water <laughs> or filling our tanks. But here in Moab, it's been super nice because we have a place to go dump and fill that is right down the road. If you guys are curious about our boondocking setup, I'll link up the videos up there as far as the install we did with the batteries and the solar and whatnot. And we are gonna be doing a big review once we've been traveling with it long enough to let you know what we think of the setup, what we would change and whatnot. We've already got some opinions as far as that goes, but I am loving this whole new style of traveling. So until next time guys, remember, stay positive, get out there. Life is an adventure, so make some memories.